Today we're going to talk about mapping and modeling a client's site and more than just the mapping and modeling. We're going to utilize a deliverable web page that I have up here right now called See My Build and we're going to go through one of our client projects. Now this project has actually been active since October of 2022 but things really started rolling in January of 2023. That's when the project got going. It's a 54 home residential build. So it's mapping and modeling for residential construction. And we're gonna be utilizing a lot of tools and we're gonna to talk to you about these tools. Now, number one, we have this deliverable web page. We're not gonna get into the web page building today, but if you head over to classes.azdrone.net, you'll actually find a class on creating a website like this for your clients. All right, let's jump into it and talk about each of the segments that we give to the clients for this drone mapping and modeling and progression um, uh, deliverable here. All right, first up, since we started this, uh, since we started this project, we have been doing video flights every other week since basically January of 2023. So, that's a lot of data and that's a lot of different types of flights. So first off, the clients really like video flights. So what goes into these two videos that we have for them? Well, of course, we're gonna need to fly the site. So we actually set up autonomous flights using Map Pilot Pro initially, and then switching to the DJI Pilot 2. So in the middle of the project, we did change up horses, but we created several autonomous flight paths that the drone could fly each and every visit. During that flight, we were, of course, recording. We were utilizing the Mavic 2 Pro to start out with, and we used uh, Litchi to actually block out our flight paths. Now, into the project, we switched horses and we moved from the Mavic 2 Pro over to the Mavic 3 Enterprise. We carried over the same flight paths that we had in Map Pilot Pro to the DJI uh, Pilot 2 app. So what we started doing with Map Pilot and um, the Mavic 2 Pro, we switched everything to the Mavic 3 Enterprise. So we had some transitions to make, but in the end, we still had the same flight paths that were reusable over and over again. And this was something that the clients really appreciated. So building this, we utilized Final Cut Pro to actually do the editing from those autonomous flight paths. So down below here, we spend a good bit of time actually doing um, labels for these, uh, for these video presentations so that they can show what's been completed, what's not been completed. You get the idea. But the big thing to keep in mind is a lot of autonomous flight went into this. So if you're doing mapping and modeling of sites, you're going to need to get something of a background on using autonomous flight apps, okay? So there's what we're using. And once again, we do have more in-depth uh, classes on this at classes.azdrone.net. So if you're curious um, to check out more, you can do that. So the next one we have here is December 15th and 29th uh, before and after this year, okay? So, and we actually utilized the Mavic 3 Enterprise to fly a grid pattern. So we were making ortho mosaics and we also made some okay 3D models out of it as well, but we weren't there to model um, 3D. That was just an extra bonus. So as you can see, we've got a slider on here so we can actually see the changes over time um, that have occurred. And if I point down here, it's uh, December 29th is the label and on the left-hand side, December 15th. So this is actually a WordPress plugin that we use called 2020. So first we assemble our orthos. So the first thing we need to do is actually go fly our ortho mosaics. So we've been using an east-west pattern with this one. Occasionally we've used a north-south as well um, to get a little more data, but the clients weren't too big into the 3Ds. We did a 3D model, but these before and afters were very meaningful for them. So once again, a lot of additional autonomous flight work that you got to do. Um, but you know, once you've got it all set up, it's it's pretty uh, straightforward on each visit that we do. You know, 
We do our uh, mapping flights, we do our video flights, we do our still flights, and occasionally we do 360 flights for the clients as well. But that is not a consistent pattern with them. So occasionally they'll ask for that or ask for other still images as well. So Mavic 3 Enterprise and initially the uh, Mavic 2 Pro, and you're gonna see something from that down below momentarily. After we, um, after we present the ortho mosaic, I scroll down again. And so we did do that 3D site model um, from the flights that we did above. So uh, after, after finishing our flights and finishing our models in Metashape and in Web ODM, we actually upload to Sketchfab um, just to show the, the quick 3D model of what's been going on in there. So now let's talk about the big one. We've got another before and after, which I don't usually do, okay? But this one's special because we're at the end of the year. So we're going into 2025. So I thought it'd be great to do a before and after from one of our initial flights in December of 2022, December 2nd. So we were still working out these flight paths and didn't have them quite perfected. But I'll tell you what, this still came out amazing. So the before in December of 2022 was using a Mavic 2 Pro and using Map Pilot Pro to do the autonomous flights for capturing all of these images. Now, we shifted from the Mavic 2 Pro in July of 2023, and we moved over to the Mavic 3 Enterprise. It's much quicker, it's a faster flight, but I will say that things lined up very nicely between the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 3 Enterprise. On the left-hand side, that side is December 2nd of 2022, several years ago. This side was uh, captured using the Mavic 2 Pro. On the right-hand side, there we have down here December 29th, 20, uh, 2024, and this was captured with the Mavic 3 Enterprise and the, uh, Pilot, uh, the Pilot 2 app. So we've had some changes here in what we were flying and also the applications we were using to capture all this data, but these things lined up so nice. So right-hand side is going away, so we're just hiding this. So here's way back in 2022. We've got two little um, outlines of where the footings are gonna go, where they're gonna start pouring some initial concrete, and there's nothing else going on there yet. This is all open land. So when we brought in the Mavic 3 Enterprise data, and we brought that in from just last week's flight, let's see what happens. This is absolutely mind boggling. It's incredible. And the overlays are really good. Once again, on the, um, on the earliest one, that was the Mavic 2 Pro with Map Pilot Pro for our flight. And then on the right hand side, the Pilot 2 app from DJI. So we see a very nice overlay between these. So we definitely have provided some mapping for these clients. They're not doing any measurements or anything. They're using this to share with investors and share with buyers where they're at in the project right now. I think there's 18 or 19 additional homes. And then that's going to be it for this project. So somewhere in 2025, I'll probably be wrapping this project up. Of course, we'll be doing some interiors and some other flights. Um, just to actually generate the pretty after construction side of things. So by the way, I was talking through these and I was talking about where we're getting the data. So for updating the data, for doing these orthos, um, we have used WebODM and we have used uh, Metashape when we're doing demos um, for classes. We'll actually use Metashape for some of our classes and also WebODM for some of the classes as well. So you're going to need some kind of application for assembling your ortho mosaics. For us, like I said, it's Web ODM and Metashape. For other people, it could be Pix4D, um, Drone Deploy, uh, Drone Link, or you know, there are multiple different companies that actually have flight apps for you for doing autonomous flights. So you're going to need to think about that if you're getting into mapping and modeling as well. 
and some of these things can become very expensive. So I'd say don't overinvest if you're starting out. Um, you know, start out with learning about doing waypoints and video flights with waypoints, still photos with waypoints, and then move on to getting into the ortho mosaics where we're doing crosshatch patterns um, to get the images really close together with a lot of overlap. Um, you really want that to, uh, to get good orthos. But as you can see with these, it's, um, these images are fantastic. I am going to go ahead and minimize this because I was also working with uh, some TIFF files to do the overlays here. But take a look at this. There's, uh, here's the original uh, location. This is December of 2022. And we just have a couple areas where the pads are going to be cut into. I'm going to open up the uh, big TIFF from just a few days ago. So here you go. Here's all of those homes. And we can actually zoom into these. And we can see we're getting a lot of great detail on the maps here. And also, the um, thing that I've been very impressed with is how well aligned um, these TIFFs are. Uh, even though we're not doing RTK or PPK or anything, these are just uh, straight ortho shots without any additional tools. Um, you know, and this is also a great way to practice. But let me tell you, you don't necessarily need to do the RTK setups. That's going to depend on your clients. If they're looking for data that uh, is measurable, that is incredibly accurate, then of course, yes, they're going to be getting into an RTK setup. But that gets very expensive very fast. And like I said, if you're new to doing this drone mapping and modeling work, why don't you go ahead and practice with some of the autonomous flight tools first, get a feel for them, and also get a feel for the applications that are going to um, that are going to populate your final orthos, for instance. So don't overspend, but uh, keep in mind that this was done with some very simple setups. You know, once again, Mavic 2 Pro, Mavic 3E, um, MetaShape, uh, Web ODM, Final Cut Pro, Lightroom for the still images, um, occasionally Affinity Photo. So also think about the software that you're using as well. So I wanted this to be a quick overview for everybody. And once again, I do have a longer course on uh, classes.azdrone.net covering this whole project. So if you want to see the full project, learn everything about what we've put into the full project, please feel free to hop over there. And keep in mind that all of our online courses also have free previews, so you can check this one out and see if it would have value for you. Well, everybody, I hope that this one was useful and uh, gets you thinking about your start in the new year, 2025, for mapping, modeling, 360s, still images, and cool deliverables that you can present to your clients. And they can share easily because this is built on a, uh, on a web page that can be accessible to all or can be password protected and only used by your clients. All right, we'll see you in another video in uh, 2025, and I hope that you've had an awesome new year.